uh, Sam. And uh, kind of on our front, while we're waiting, um, just a few questions on our end. Um, if you kind of run through, you know, what is your favorite memory um, from the AJGA? Yeah, I think, um, you know, I was thinking about that this past week, just with the tournament about to start. Um, but I think for me, it was always something that I kind of tried to, you know, when you when I started in junior golf, it was, you know, kind of playing locally uh, and then playing state tournaments and then the AJGA events were something that I always wanted to try to play. Uh, once I felt like I was good enough to, you know, play nationally. And then um, I think for me, just kind of like trying to work my way up in the ranks of the AJGA, you know, starting with the junior events and the junior invitationals and the opens um, and then the open invitationals. And so uh, for me, it was always just a challenge to see, um, you know, how, not quick, but how I could just work my way up the ranks, um, try to contend at, in each of those events. And so, um, yeah, I just think that, you know, the competition is just so, so good. And uh, it, it's really amazing how far the <clears throat> AJJ has gone. No, that's awesome. And um, what's kind of one thing from the AJGA that you feel uh, helped prepare you for uh, collegiate and professional golf? I think the, you know, the quality of uh, the golf courses that, you know, that were on the schedule each year um, and also the competition, I knew that, you know, those, those events were going to have, you know, the best fields and players uh, each week. And so um, it was something where you could kind of see how your game stacked up against everybody else. And um, so I think that was the biggest thing for me is just, you know, trying to, prepare each week um, to win one of those events was wasn't like you were just going out there and kind of going through the motions. Yeah, no, you you definitely did that too with uh, being our 2014 Rolex Player of the Year. Um, pretty incredible kind of run that you had there in junior golf, which is awesome. How uh, can you kind of tell us, you know, how special the Landings Club is to you and in, in the Club Car Championship uh, now and kind of what that win meant to you? Yeah, I think uh, it was huge for me. Um, you know, my first year on, on the corn ferry, um, you know, just kind of trying to figure out, you know, if I was good enough to win out there, or kind of where I was going to be. Um, <clears throat> and then going into that week, you know, I felt like my game was in a good spot. Uh, I remember I shot even part of the first round and was like seven or eight back. Um, and then shot, I think it was 65, three days in a row. Um, but yeah, I think, you know, the Landings Club, you know, always have a special place in my heart just because it's, you know, kind of where my career jump started. Um, and so you know, that'll always be a place that I remember uh, getting my first win. Um, and really just, you know, I love that area. The Savannah area is really, really cool. And we love, um, you know, just going and visiting that area and getting to experience, um, you know, that part of the country. And so, it will, uh, it will always have a special place in my heart for sure. Um, so just kind of um, going back to, you know, your success, um, you know, with the AJGA and then obviously, you know, winning uh, out on the Corn Ferry Tour and, and now uh, a PGA Tour winner. You know, what does it mean to you to have your name on an AJGA tournament uh, at the site of your first professional win? Yeah, I think, um, you know, I can remember, you know, playing in those events growing up and, you know, some of those guys would have their own tournaments and I was like, man, this is really cool. Like just to be able to, you know, knowing that those guys played in those events as juniors and then now that they're, um, you know, kind of partnering with the AJGA and um, putting their name on an event and just kind of, you know, trying to be able to give back to an organization that gave us so much opportunities. Um, I think is the, is the most special part for me is just, you know, I know how much it means to those kids to have that opportunity to play because it meant so much to me. Um, so really just, you know, trying to help grow the game um, and help, you know, the AJJ in any way that, that I can. Um, so I know it's a small way, but hopefully it will uh, make an impact on those kids. 
Yeah, no, we, we definitely uh, appreciate it on our end. And I know um, myself being a junior golfer growing up, definitely looked up to, you know, those guys that are out on tour and just mm -hmm. everything they're able to accomplish. Um, so I know it means a ton to the junior kids that are out there this week and um, just so exciting on that front. You know, who was your biggest supporter, um, you know, throughout your, your golf career? Um, well, I think, um, I mean, my, my parents for sure um you know just all the sacrifices and the time that they you know put in to haul me around to different tournaments um and kind of just let me chase chase my dream and I think you know without them it would, definitely would not have been possible um and I think you know now that I'm older and kind of look back with a different perspective I see uh you know all of those experiences that we had um were just really invaluable and so there'll be you know we have stories that we remember from a lot of those different places that we went um which is we, that we talk about all the time so it's really cool for us to look back and see all the places that we went and all the different uh memories that we have yeah no for sure kind of along those same lines um do you have any relationships that you kind of established while you were playing junior golf that you still have kind of not on tour or, or maybe just through collegiate golf yeah um scotty scheffler and i are really good buddies and we played a bunch um in the ajga events um our wives are really good friends so we hang out with them a lot on the road um so yeah it's it's really cool you know you see you play with all those guys when you're 10 years old and you look up 15 years down the road and they're still playing together um just on a different level but uh it's really neat to uh you know we'll still talk about i can remember scotty and i were talking about the other day there was an event he was playing the group in front of me um and i think it was i think cameron champ may have been in our group and brad Dalkey. um but Scotty teed off on the first hole and then he realized he had a training aid in his bag and it was an extra club. So he got a four shot penalty on the first hole. Um, so we always joke for him not to, to make sure he doesn't have that club in his bag still. <laughs> Patrick, can yeah. I piggyback off this one? Yeah, go ahead, Cheyenne. Sorry, I'll save the rest of mine for the end, but there's a lot of corn fairy tour guys just mentioned. Um, Scott, so Sam, Scotty Scheffler actually finished 2019 runner up here in Savannah as well. Um, can you just talk about the level of play on the Corn Ferry Tour, I think, you know, you sort of famously in Savannah at least had already played with Tiger by the time you arrived here for the 2018 tournament and people understanding just how competitive the Corn Ferry Tour is and how close people are to being on the big tour. Yeah, um, I mean, <clears throat> the competition is extremely, I mean, it's an extremely high level. Um, I think a lot of times people understand, you know, they think, you know, if, just because the guys on the Corn Ferry Tour that, well, he's not good enough to play on the PGA Tour, which is so far from true. Um, and a lot of times it just is one of those things where, you know, you just have to play well at the right times. And so, um, but I think now that, you know, the Corn Ferry Tour is offering um, guys a lot of, you know, opportunities to, to get out on the PGA Tour. And um, especially with some of the new things they've in, put in place with the, you know, the off it's called uh the opposite field events um for the corn fairy guys where they're i think it's the top 10 maybe uh get to get a spot in those events um but yeah i mean the, the competition is extremely high level um and there's so many guys out there that definitely have the game um to play on the pga tour it's just a matter of time Yeah, definitely. Um, kind of getting back a little bit to, to the landings club. What uh, what advice can you provide kind of our junior golfers this week uh, when playing the landings club? Yeah, I think um, from what I remember, I mean, the golf course, um, it's pretty fair off the tee. Um, I think it's more of a second shot golf course. And so, um, and depending on the weather and the kind of the warm, and you get um, feel the wind at times. So really, I think um, just having a good and trying to give yourself a lot of opportunities on those greens. The greens are so good um, that if you get it started online, you're pretty much going to make it. Um, 
So that was one of the things that I really liked about that place is just the quality of the golf course was um, at a high level. And I mean, it was probably one of the better events that we got to play every year. So that's awesome. Um, I'm sure, you know, every week that you teed up, your goal is to win, um, you know, being a competitive guy like yourself, playing out on tour. But what was your uh, experience like playing your first Open Championship this year? Yeah, it was awesome. Um, I mean, the, just the golf over there is so different from what I'm used to um, over here. It was really it was really fun for me just trying to figure out kind of the best way to play um, that golf course. Obviously, I did not – figure out the best way to play it. But uh, it was cool. It was just a unique challenge that I don't get to see every week. Um, you know, just with the different winds and grass and, I mean, different shots that you have to play. Um, so that was probably the most enjoyable part for me is just kind of trying to figure out, you know, I've got 130 yards and usually that's one club for me, but I could hit about six different shots right now from here. So just trying to figure out what, you know, what the most effective shot would be in that situation um, is definitely something that I enjoyed. Yeah, that's awesome. Um, and then one last question of mine, and I'll turn it over to Cheyenne, but how has your uh, life kind of changed since uh, winning your first uh, PGA Tour event this year? Yeah, um, I think from a golf perspective, just um, – it's kind of opened up some new opportunities and doors um, just for events like, you know, being in the Masters next year. Um, you know, it's something I always wanted to do as a kid playing that. So uh, that was a dream come true. And then, um, I mean, gave me a better chance for, for the FedEx Cup for the rest of the year, uh, put me in a good spot for that. So um, really just a couple of different things from a golf perspective, but other than that, not not really uh, much has changed. Um, so, yeah. Awesome. Well, we uh, look forward to cheering you on uh, once you do make that FedEx Cup championship there in Atlanta. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Appreciate yeah. it. Cheyenne? Sam, speaking of your first win, how, how important for you just to know that you belong, obviously, out there, but even going back to your first Corn Ferry Tour win, how important are those wins to continue to propel the mental side of what you do? Yeah, I think they're extremely important. And I think um, more importantly for me, it was just kind of validation of the things that I've been working on, um, whether it's from a golf swing perspective or a mental side, um, short game, that kind of stuff. When you see, when you kind of start seeing results in those high pressure situations. Um, that's, that's why we do what we do, um, just to put all that time in and then you want to get in those situations just to see if it works, just to see if, you know, what we've been doing is um, the right thing. Um, and if it's not, how do we learn from that and change that for the next time? So we're talking a little bit about, right, the opportunity to go play in the Masters next year, maybe to play in Atlanta. Um, we've got lots of fans that travel over from RBC Heritage to, from Savannah to go over to RBC Heritage. But one of the things we do on the Corn Ferry Tour that's important to us beyond obviously, you know, making sure developing talent is key and, and moving players onto the PGA Tour is also developing a fan base. We want people to know who you are, what you are about, how good you are before you get on the PGA Tour. So as these fans sort of travel around, I, I was actually in Tampa during the Valspar Championship, supposed to be there on Sunday. My phone's just, you know, blowing up. Are you watching? Do you see him? And it's, it's so special what that creates as soon as somebody wins here. And every time someone who's won here plays well, that's what happens. So just talk a little bit about the fan experience and how important they are, especially after we've, you know, finally moved on the other side yeah. of not having them. Yeah, absolutely. I think, um, you know, at the end of the day, you know, we're entertainers um, and we're producing something that um, hopefully people want to watch and support. And so I think, you know, it goes back to, you know, how are you behaving when you're on the golf course? How are you, you know, when you're walking inside the ropes, are you, you know, tossing that kid a ball or giving him a fist bump because that's something that those kids will remember for a long time. And I think, um, you know, when those fans weren't out there, it was tough for us because we wanted we want to be able to do those things. <clears throat> we want to be able to make an impact, sorry, <clears throat> on, on those people that are out there. Um, so now that they're back, I mean, it's awesome. It's, it's, it's really cool for us to, you know, you hit a shot in there and you see all these people clapping and they're like, oh, my gosh, that was incredible. Did you see that? Um, so it's cool for us to be able to make that impact on people and um, kind of develop 
that personal connection without, you know, sitting down and having, you know, coffee with somebody, just being able to, you know, show that person that uh, you care that they're out there by just a, a nod or a fist bump when you walk by. And so I think it's really important, and you, you know, start that from, you know, this week at the AJGA event, the way you talk to the volunteers that are out there or the staff that's out there, you know, if you're a jerk that they're not really going to want to watch you the rest of your career, but if you're nice to them and ask them about, you know, them and what they like, um, you know, that's taking interest in other people. And that's something that we all need to do a better job of. And then, you know, you guys, look, you travel all over the world, junior golf, you know, starting in junior golf takes you all over. Obviously this region has become something that's important for you and your wife and your family from Palmetto Bluff to Hilton Head. Just talk about how, how that was really developed in your family and, and, you know, if Savannah has any part to do with that, that stuff we like to know. Yeah. So, um, my wife's family, um, they all kind of grew up going to that area, Savannah, Palmetto Bluff, uh, Bluffton area. Um, and then our families were always friends. And so we would go up there with them, um, just hang out and just kind of got used to going to that area. And then um, a couple of years ago, that's where I proposed to my wife now. Um, and then my wife and I obviously got married there as well. So uh, we just have so many good memories there. And then it just happened to work out where I won my first event on the Corn Ferry Tour uh, in that area. So I don't know, just a lot of, uh, great memories there. Um, and we really just enjoy going back there. It just kind of feels like a second home to us. Um, and we look forward to, to playing the heritage every year. Um, and hopefully we, we can get back there more, but yeah, it's just, uh, I don't know, the people there are so incredible. Um, the staff at the landings club was awesome. I remember that week just being so welcoming and, all the volunteers out there. Um, so yeah, it's just, they make you feel like home um, and they make you feel welcome. And that's something that's uh, is really awesome. Southern hospitality. Yep. All right, yep. my last one, so we can give you a break before the kiddos. Um, just talk a little bit about, you know, guys sitting on the bubble, right? Maybe he's 27, maybe gonna get his card, maybe gonna have to go to Corn Ferry Tour finals. From having played through this tour and being so successful on the PGA Tour, what, what would you tell them and how, how you get there, right? What, what's the steps to take to continue this grind until you get your card? Yeah, I don't think, um, you know, there's no perfect answer for that. There's no secret. Um, I think, and I can only, you know, speak of experience for myself. Um, but I think for me, it's something that was always really important is, you know, having a plan and sticking to that plan. Um, you know, I think a lot of times it's easy when you get out there to try to change, change a bunch of different things. You're always trying to find something that's better. Um, when a lot of times that really doesn't exist. And I've, I've struggled with that too. Um, struggle with trying to find a, you know, something that's better than what I thought I had when the end it wasn't. Um, so really just, you know, it's the whole same. It's not, if it's not broken. Don't fix it. Um, so really just trying to stick with a plan, um, you know, trust that, you know, that's right. And that's the, you know, that's the correct route you should go and just, um, you know, just keep working hard. Beautiful.